I'd like to spend a few moments to discuss the concept of synchronicity versus asynchronicity uh, in database systems, in message queues such as RabbitQM, Kafka, and in programming. I believe this is where it was most popularized. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Backend Engineering Show with your host, Hussein Nasser. And the definition of synchronous versus asynchronous is when you read it, it doesn't make any sense. So the best way to understand the synchronicity and asynchronicity is, is really just put it in practice. If you have an operation that you called, right? And you made a method call. If that operation blocks you for the duration of the execution and it does everything in its own unit while you're blocked, then that's synchronous. And during the period from which this operation is doing its work, you are effectively blocked. You cannot resume and do anything. You're just waiting for the result of the operation. And the moment this operation fully completes an emphasis on fully complete here right and then returns a result to you right you are unblocked and you can continuing execution so what's the problem with that with synchronous operations uh, main problem is uh, while i am blocked i can really do other things technically right so i can call this method and while it's doing its thing i can really do other stuff right because i'm not really as a client i'm not really doing anything right so this is where asynchronous behavior comes into the picture and says okay right here's what we can do i'm gonna call this function right and we're gonna immediately get you back a result not really it's not really the final result it's a promise for a result it's a future result that's what it's called in c++ i believe right it's something that hey we, we're gonna get we're gonna get you that result but i i have scheduled successfully the function call or this operation call and and this operation can do literally anything it can it can use a single threaded model like node.js or really the the javascript model where it just will will, will look for period of idle anything where the function is idle and we'll just hey i'm gonna execute that stuff during that time or it can execute the workload on another thread or another process or guess what in another machine altogether it doesn't matter while this operation is being executed on any other realm i can do my own stuff right and I can do my own job. And when that operation completes, it can call me back with a result, right? So when I get called back with this result, that's the initial model, uh, yeah, I, can, I can do this stuff, right? So now when I get back the call back with the results, uh, I would have gotten a result. But during that time, I wasn't really blocked. I could have done anything else very popular methods this is basically what's referred to asynchronous operations asynchronous operation synchronous operation so we want to take it to the next level it's very critical to understand the difference between the two because they show up everywhere right specifically specifically in the back end they show up everywhere right they show up in databases they show up in message queuing they show up in programming or daily day-to-day -day programming the operations that you do so Let's take some examples of that now that we have defined what synchronous versus asynchronous mean. And by the way, if you want to dive into details, I made a video on synchronous versus asynchronous uh, with examples. Uh, check it out if you want more definition than that. So for the first example is in programming for the longest time, most operations when I used to program in the early 2000s, were synchronous there was no concept of asynchronous as far as i know right you call a function you are blocked you cannot do anything for for even in those early days when i used to build b vb6 app and early vb.net apps and c sharp apps even the ui wasn't refreshing if you called a synchronous synchronous methods my man this is a pain how do you say synchronous methods without adding an a right so I'm just going to say synchronous method. If you call any synchronous methods, 
you're technically blocked. So, so even the UI didn't have a way to refresh. And, and then later we had this thing that's called do events in VB6. I don't know if any one of you guys remember the stuff, do events, you do that so that, hey, while this is actually executing, you can still do some other work in the back and so some, some hacks and walkarounds. And then this was enhanced by adding the concept of async await, right? And then I, I think it's in pretty much every programming language has this concept of async await, whether in, in C sharp and in, in, in JavaScript, obviously, it's there with promises, right? You call a function and then you you don't you're not really blocked and waiting for this function to finish no you can do other stuff as well right you're not just sitting there idle and that's that's the main problem so you might say Hussein, isn't asynchronous thing is the best right well we're gonna come to that right so while synchronous the javascript eventually initially tried to solve it with callbacks that was a terrible model we all have seen those functions that has a callback and then you in the callback you call another function that has a callback or another function that has a callback so yeah not readable at all so promises kind of simplified that of and async await kind of put a nail on the coffin and says yeah this is the best thing ever now your code looks synchronous like as if you're blocked right but you're not really blocked the, the the main thread is doing is squeezing any idle time you might have right but giving you the behavior of synchronicity right but the whole thing is almost asynchronous you call a method if you're calling a network right rest api now i i don't have to sit here and wait for anything well technically you are waiting but while you're waiting your thread of execution can do other stuff that you might have like it can respond to events that you click on a button it can respond to animation that you might have in the browser and that 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 kind of applies to literally anything like if you ever can respond to a timer that triggers every second it can do stuff imagine this was not possible 20 years ago yikes right so it was possible but with hacks but yeah so asynchronous synchronicity very simple thing and then that was in programming we brought it in in message queues uh, especially now we move to back end programming right if i have a service on the back end that does certain amount of work right i don't know it 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 it, it does some execution and maybe queries a database and get some results and morph this result to something else it has some sort of an x amount of execution time right and that is depends how you define long but it's long effectively right so so engineer said sure i can call this rest call right this network call i can call it asynchronously from the client or so pay attention to that so i am asynchronous here at the client side yeah i made the call the back end is executing that call synchronously technically so from the from if you if you, if, if you put like a lens where are you looking here if you're looking at the back end you're synchronous you're executing things synchronously because you're blocked technically right whoever called this is blocked but from the client perspective you called it asynchronously right so you did not receive the results yet you you called it and then you moved along and doing other thing so the asynchronicity at the client side is different from the back so now that wasn't scalable for uh because what happened if that operation failed like okay uh, you can retry so I'm saying i'm gonna ju i'm just gonna retry but that wasn't scalable so people introduced this asynchronous execution at the back end level in a form of 
queues, right? A very basic, beautiful data structure. I says, okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. You can call this method as long running operation, but we're not going to actually call it. We're just going to add it to a queue. And the fact by us and the backend adding your request to a queue, that in itself is a synchronous operation that it takes milliseconds to execute. Hey, adding to a queue. And then I can return the operation being a success to the client who called it. So, so now it was an immediate, almost immediate execution. Did we get the result? No, we did not. But to the client, we technically got a result. And we, and, and now you can, you can argue, oh, this is not the actual result. Well, we got a job ID, we got a queue ID, we got something in the client side, right? And now the client is responsible to pull the result. So now you can pull, okay, send another request. Am I done yet? And the fact, just the nature of this polling is also synchronous, right? Because, hey, calling this and get the result back, right? Hey, it's not there. Calling is not there. Calling is not there. So the whole thing is still synchronous, but the whole backend operation, if you look at it as a whole, that is an asynchronous execution with the help of this queues, right? No. So the, the entry that we added is effectively a message. That's how message queues is able to scale, right? Because I don't I don't want I don't want to put the burden right on execution failure on the client. So hey, if this failed, I'm gonna don't worry, I'm gonna retry it later on the back end. Right? So we just we just performed asynchronous execution of a job on the back end. So this is what is called the, the asynchronous execution, but we talk it in another lens. It's at the back end level. So technically I called your method and I immediately got a result back, right? Although technically the method was not finished, right? Sounds sound familiar, right? It's very similar to calling a local method that you call and you immediately get a future or a promise, right? Let's say, hey, oh, something is, is almost done here, right? So I'm, I'm doing the execution on the background, technically. We took, if we zoomed out, this is very similar to calling a network call and having the backend asynchronously on the backend doing its own job and executing the job on the backend. So that's another way of looking at asynchronous execution, but from a different lens, if that makes sense, right? So calling the method, immediately get a result, but now you're responsible as a client to poll, right? And we can do all sorts of things like long polling, or you can have the uh, server actually pushes the result. Disadvantages and advantages for every single method. I talked about these things and many times in this channel, but yeah, Asynchronous execution on the back end is, and I, I, there is another name for it, not really official, it's like asynchronous service. So if, if you heard of this term asynchronous service, that's a service that you call that doesn't immediately give you the raw final result, right? When it finishes. No, it gives you a hold, a placeholder for you to come back and check if, if that job is done. Right, so asynchronously on the back end is gonna is gonna do some work, but you can check back with me at, at a given amount of time if that job is done or not. So, queue is very very popular. Right, that is one of the ways that backends can scale effectively. Take YouTube for example. If you upload a raw video now, YouTube has to do a lot of work, and it's impossible to do this synchronously right after 
you upload the video. Imagine uploading a video and YouTube has to uh, compress the video. You'd have to to do a Kodak for the video. Has to produce a 480p, 720p, 1080p, and 4K. All these formats has to produce them while you as a client just waiting for the upload, right? Imagine if any of these operations fail. Your upload will fail, right? It's impossible to do it. So what you do is upload that file and then just tell me hey here is your youtube id but i'm not done yet the moment you say i'm not done yet that's asynchronous right because you, you yeah you give me a partial result which is the id of the youtube video but you're still checking for copyright infringement checking for content id checking for compressing the video doing all of this stuff how do you possibly gonna do that message queues and pop subsystems help uh, real-time messaging effectively help in doing that right so you're gonna add you're gonna probably create multiple topics uh, if you can use kafka and and asynchronously you're gonna pick up the jobs different jobs and all these processes are gonna pick up these stuff all right this is another example of an asynchronous execution in message queues and and, and um, pops up systems all right so we've seen the synchronous execution versus asynchronous execution in programming, normal day-to-day -day programming. We've seen it in back-end systems, network backing systems uh, uh, with message queues and pop subsystems, right? You, you submit something and, and the back-end immediately responds to you with a price holder and then asynchronously on the back-end, it actually continues execution, this stuff. All right. And then finally, the example, my favorite is how databases actually do these as asynchronous versus synchronous operations, right? So most databases have this feature that's called synchronous replication, right? So if you have a replicated database system where you have a primary database and you have, I don't know, three uh, worker database systems. So if you issue a write to the primary, right? the worker nodes need to have knowledge of this write that you have made right because you, you want to keep the the whole system consistent right you want the one you want this to hold the whole thing to be consistent right you can you can you can do this you can issue the update statement or the insert statement or the delete statement in the primary right and then block block the client do not return success to the client who issued this dml just block and wait there and in the background the primary is going to issue three calls to each of the worker nodes delete 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 or insert insert or update update issue the same dml and if you're going to wait for the first node and the second one and the third node for a success on all of them and if all of them succeeds then you're gonna get all of them succeeds on the primary get these messages only then the message right will be delivered to the client that says your right have seen succeed despite the initial right actually succeeding on the primary database because i wrote i issued a right to the primary Yet I have blocked for the duration of execution in all the worker nodes. Yikesy. That is called synchronous replication. Very, very popular for strong consistency. If you want to guarantee strong consistency, you have to do synchronous commits, right? Syn synchronous, sorry, synchronous replication. Synchronous commits, that other thing. The other face of this coin is asynchronous replication. So you're going to issue a write to this primary database, but immediately get a success when the write effectively succeeds on the primary. That is, if you write successfully to the wall record right uh, the right to add log and then get back the results but you we say oh Jose, wait a second how about these worker nodes well i don't i don't really care right let them asynchronously let the database asynchronously update this thing 
to me i wrote successfully why do i have to wait for all these suckers to write to their own local data files i don't care okay so when you do that what do you get asynchronous replication gets you beautiful fast writes blazing fast writes because you're just writing to one thing and one thing only right just that primary database so so your writes are fast but mm, do you get consistency nah because the moment you write and then you return success if you if you immediately follow it up with a read you read might be load balance to one of the replicas and if you go to that replica while you while you write haven't asynchronously finished yet writing to the replica you're gonna get the stale version that's what happened to youtube back in 2006 2007 right people will go to their profile picture and doesn't do, do an update and what do they do save and the first thing they do refresh the page when you refresh the page reads were configured to be read from the replicas that's how you basically uh, make it uh, uh make it fast right so like hey i, I want to scale my reads uh, let them go to my replicas to my worker nodes and my writes goes to the primary that was like the basic simplest de design that you can build and when you do that refreshing the profiles is like, what i don't see my change what happened uh, i took this uh, this is an example from uh the YouTube lead, I think uh, Sugu Sugu Marang. I hope I didn't butcher his name, right? Uh, he's the creator of, uh, he, he maintained YouTube for a long time. He's a creator of uh, uh, Vitas, uh, which is the MySQL uh, plugin that allow you to uh, scale MySQL shards. Basically does a, there's like a logical layer in MySQL sharding, beautiful, beautiful product. So, uh, when you and, and so users were confused like wait i just i just wrote what the heck happened so that's the result of eventual consistency yeah sure eventually we're gonna be consistent the whole system is gonna be consistent right but at that point you can decide hey it's not really a big deal refresh again keep refreshing you're gonna see your change right uh, but but YouTube fixed it differently at that end, right? They said, okay, if you're coming from the same IP address and you just issued a write, I'm gonna point you read to the primary node, so you always see your change. So they did this hack so that people don't freak out. Nothing wrong with that. To me, that's that's always a good solution temporarily for that fix, right? It's like, and they got fast writes, and they got consistent results because they kind of played with the kind of played it sticky if you think about it. like they they sh issued a sticky read in this particular case so synchronous replication is synchronous replication a lot of databases support this is that it's a it's a plug you can do right it's just a tu tuning option you can do if you want a strongly consistent result go with synchronous but you suffer with your right your rights are going to be slower obviously right but if you want in if you want fast rights but uh you don't really you're fine if 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 your if you read gets like i don't know a little bit of staler results i don't know if you're building instagram you have you have a little bit of a staler number of likes who cares right uh yeah so it really depends in use case there's no right or wrong right so another option with synchronicity is is this thing that's called synchronous commits and i don't know if other databases support it but postgres have this option that you can turn on so synchronous commits it by default is scary right it's like okay synchronous commits like just just you who's saying same synchronous commits that implies there is an asynchronous commits right this is not something you play with this is scary because what is a commit a commit is mean okay i i am doing all my transact transaction and i'm issuing all these beautiful operations and all of a sudden uh uh finally i say commit my changes and that writes basically a, a record that says this is final this this please make this changes durable on desk so that durability right committing is is a very critical thing in database when i say commit and you tell me that it succeeds i better not lose this if the moment you tell me 
my commit succeed, I can turn off the power at that exact millisecond and I can turn back the database back on and my change should be there. That's what durability is. When you tell me, as long as you tell me my commit succeed, if you don't tell me my commit succeeds, all bets are off. But if you, if I commit to my changes and, and even the moment, just a fraction of a millisecond later, the power went off, my changes should be durable. That's, that's what the definition of a commit. That's technically what a synchronous commit is. When you do a commit, you immediately flush all these things to, to disk. And you can imagine how slow can this be if your transaction is so large and it has to flush all this writes to disk, right? I know databases kind of flush to disk as you they assume they, they are optimistic. Most databases have this optimistic model. It's like, okay, I trust you. You're not going to roll back or fail. So I'm going to write, 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 write to disk. And at the end, that at least what Postgres does. At the end, when you do a commit, oh, I already flushed all these to disk. Um, I have only a few things to flush to disk. Da, 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 done, right? Uh, other databases are not right. To, they write to memory instead. And then when you commit, they flush things from memory to disk. And that takes more time right that's why commits in postgres are blazing fast because they write to disk all the time and then they in the case of a failure then they figure out how they can roll back these stale changes that they sh shouldn't be in disk anymore so yeah postgres has this option to called synchronous commits where they when you issue a commit i'm gonna block you until all of these writes physically are on disk emphasis on physically there is a quote here with fsync and how operating system cache works i'm not gonna go into that here it deserves its own video but let's assume it's physically written to disk right for here for for the for example six so now there is another option for the brave called asynchronous commits yes you heard me right that means if i issue a commit i'm gonna immediately get a success succeed success so my transactions are i don't know what's that but they're fast they are blazing fast because hey i just commit i'm going to asynchronously commit to your changes while uh, while you just have the you you're gonna you you're gonna enjoy the fast commits well well you might say hussein what, what if the asynchronously there was a failure yep <laughs> this is a, a thing that you take a risk for there is a high chance of data loss because when when in synchronous operations and synchronous commits when the postgres or any other database tells you commit succeeds you can guarantee that it's actually commit succeed but in asynchronous mode when you say commit succeed you cannot trust it you can turn off the power right after that succeeds succeeds success and your data might not be there sorry yes yes <laughs> but i have this option actually uh, turned on asynchronous operation it's actually the option is called synchronous commits and that's on by default in postgres and I have it turned off on my testing database uh, because it's, it's just for, for running tests. And I load data on a daily basis. I flush the database and load stuff daily basis. So I want fast transaction. And I know asynchronously, I'm not going to have a power outage. And if it did, big deal. I'm just going to reload the data, right? For running daily tests, it's amazing. My transactions finish way much faster. Not as fast as I would like, but they're fast. There's not much big difference that I saw, right? Yeah, asynchronicity everywhere. The final example, F-Sync. Let's say I said I'm not going to mention it, but I'm going to mention it. So F-Sync, what is this? So this is an operating system level thing. When you... When you write, when you ask your operating system to write to disk, the operating the OS is actually sneaky. They they don't write physically to disk. They write to their own operating system cache because they don't 
because most applications you know when they write they write a lot right they they issue a lot of rights so operating system kind of batches these rights is okay ah, i know i know you want to write to disk but wait for a few milliseconds cache all these things in my own operating system cache which is in memory and then i'm gonna flush them to this so it's very similar to synchronous commit it's gonna flush them to physically to the disk after a period of time i don't know i don't know how long but uh it's gonna be it, it could be 300 milliseconds could be 10 milliseconds who cares? who knows i don't know to be honest you might say hussein but isn't if i write something and i read it i see it immediately in the operating system what are you talking about well the operating system had the full control of course they're gonna give you the results from the latest fresh cache they're not gonna go to the disk and read a stale value for you right so the operating system at the end of the day it's the the, the barest thing to the to the metal right so if you issue a right it always goes through an os right so in databases this is unacceptable most databases turn this capability off it's like os caching yuck i don't want it if i tell you to write os you better write to desk don't do this uh, operating system hacky hack caches i don't care i want to maintain durability right i am a database god damn it i'm a database so if i tell you to commit and or, or write this thing you better write especially wall changes wall changes this this right ahead logs this you cannot play with those you can play with data pages like index i don't care if the index didn't get updated uh, i have my wall changes here which says update blah 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 that's just a, almost like a journal this this have to be flushed to this because of the durability yikesy bad thing so uh this this option is turned on by default i believe in postgres but you can turn it off too and it gives you very similar to synchronous versus asynchronous right think about it the os cache is an asynchronous operation because you told the operating system to write to this but it didn't it gives you a partial result it says yeah i wrote but it says <laughs> idiot i didn't really write it to this i write it to my cache but yeah asynchronously is gonna flush it to disk and, and this is there is a good reason for the os to do that because if you issue a lot of writes writing to disk really a hard drive is gonna be slow so operating system that uh, uh, try to batch as much of writes as possible so that if a, there is a, a, a an a, an o a, if there is a disk page that receives a lot of writes is gonna is gonna all these writes come become in memory and then you flash this right one shot to the database right to the, to the disk immediately right right versus imagine you're updating the same page and every single update to the page you go to the disk and slam it right it's like ta ta you, you just updated the same page 10 times right so you're gonna issue 10 ios in the case of os you updated 10 times in the cache and the os will write it only once this also uh, gives you uh, the the ssd if in case of you're using ssd it's going to prolong the life of the ssd because this is these the the hate that if there's one thing the ssd hates is writing in the same page multiple times yaxi i know uh, ssds does all this kind of a garbage collection and it just tries to move things around into new pages so it can reuse different pages but yeah and over this this video went too long i guess guys huh sorry about that but asynchronicity synchronous operations versus asynchronous operation they are everywhere they are everywhere and uh, tell me guys give me examples where you prefer synchronicity over asynchronicity right let me know in the comment section below i am going to see you on the next one you guys all stay awesome all this